vision turns into task management. And often when we have those conversations with our staff, it turns into, did you do this? When can I expect that? Is the program happening? Uh, what's the marketing plan for this? And what we're trying to do is make sure that our supervisors know and are buying into the culture change that happens around talent management because supervision is so much more than just making sure the tasks are being done. Um, so Ellen's gonna click on our next piece of our slide. Supervision really is about building a trusting relationship and about helping our supervisees learn and grow and about caring for the people that they are well beyond the work. And there's lots of data that shows us why this is so important. Um, part of it has to do with turnover. And um, we recently learned from our friends um, at the Gallup organization that millennials will hold 10 to 14 jobs before the age of 38. That was shocking to me. I knew it was a high number, um, but that just to me is a very scary premonition of the fact that people are moving around so much, so frequently. I know that I have a younger cousin who has had four jobs. She is 30 years old and she just keeps changing jobs. She's in the um, accounting profession. Just, you know, somebody offers her another couple thousand dollars, she changes to another place. And she's not in any place more than 18 or 24 months. And it's not um, the way that I grew my career. And it's certainly not the way that we hope that we're um, engaging staff at JCCs to grow their careers and stick with us, um, especially in a JCC where we have a seasonal kind of um, work that we do. It takes a year to even know everything that goes on in a JCC. So when we talk about um, turnover at the JCC, we talk about, often we think about those hourly workers. We think about the lifeguards. We think about the camp staff that may or may not come back or their after school staff. Um, but there's also people who hold other pieces of our jobs like the front desk, administration staff, things like that, who tend to be in the more high turnover areas. And we wanna see how we can help change that through supervision, through talent management, and understanding more about the people and helping them to be nurtured and to grow. Um, so I, I wanna open it up just for a few minutes to chat um, about how are you engaging millennials that work for you beyond the job and the task that they do. Um, it are, I, I had heard from people at one JCC that they have a young staff um, luncheon on a monthly basis where they pull together anyone under 30 years old and they all have lunch together and a senior manager gets together with them and there's some kind of a topic that they talk about. So um, unmute yourself and tell us um, if there's something that you're doing at your JCC or you can write it into the chat room if you don't have audio. Anybody? I see Portland people talking, but I don't hear you. I don't know if you guys are talking amongst yourselves or if you want to unmute yourself. Hi, Joy. It's Angie from the Hi, JCC Angie. in Toronto. Hi, Angie in Toronto. Tell us what you're doing. So we don't have anything really formal. I can say that I've got a couple of millennials that I directly supervise. Uh, and really just have conversations about what they're sort of interested in doing outside of their job, like kind of stress, stretch assignments or other opportunities and just engage them in a way that just lets them know that they can branch out and take on more stuff. Uh, also a flexibility in terms of what else they're up to in their life. So some of them are working mostly full time, but they're taking on other stuff uh, and having the flexibility for them to be able to do both where it's like hey can I can I stay later today so I can like come in later tomorrow like that kind of flexibility for them like really has them 
see that it's an opportunity that they can actually do more than just their job here and take on and get fulfilled elsewhere. That's great. It's great yeah. when you're able to be flexible like that. Yeah. Thank you. Steve? Um, I think there's a couple things. Jennifer and I were talking um, about some of the things we do. And I don't know that anything we're doing is, is unique. Um, but we have revamped our monthly staff meetings to make sure that they provide both a combination of time for people to sort of get to know each other and celebrate successes, as well as each month making sure that there's some kind of training that is really going to be valuable. And, and our HR director tries very hard to um, be responsive to what it is that our staff says they'd like to learn more about. Um, and then one of the things we've started doing with our managers, most of whom are millennials, um, Jennifer has started this year a monthly strategic meeting um, so that they feel more involved in some of the discussions um, at a higher level about the direction that the organization is going. Um, and we're in the midst of a strategic plan right now and we're trying very hard to engage as many of the staff as possible in discussing the revised mission and the revised vision and um, some of the different initiatives that we're exploring so that they feel like they're not just sort of along the lines of what you were saying, they're not just here to do tasks, but they're part of the organization and part of our community and that we value their ideas about the long-term vision and the strategic um, direction. And if you want to add. Yeah, no, and I, I would only add, um, our managers all have their monthly meetings with their staff, so the aquatic department, the fitness department, membership, and so on. And I know a lot of those meetings, they talk about what needs to happen in the tasks and whatnot, but given that we have a lot of staff that are younger, high school students, college students, we talk about our responsibility as supervisors and as the JCC to teach these you know, kids, for lack of a better word, on how to be an employee and how to have a job. And so we kind of focus on that in hopes that we can retain them because we're giving them skills that they can take elsewhere later, if that makes sense. Yeah, so often we teach them the right things and then they go someplace else. So yeah. um, the more we can keep teach them and keep them, the better off we are. And I think what you reported about monthly strategic planning, the research also shows us that more than um, generations in the past, millennials really want to know why. Why are you asking me to do this task? Why is this important to the JCC? How can I be more of a strategic thinker with you rather than just being told something needs to be done? And the more that we can have them be part of those conversations, obviously, where it's um, the right thing to have them involved in, the better off they are. So that's really great that you're able to do that. Well, thanks for sharing those things. That's, that's great. Um, so one of the things that we find um, also from a Gallup poll is that employees don't leave companies, they leave their managers. And employee... Um, Gallup uses the term managers the way that we use supervisors. Um, and so very often, this is really true, um, when, we, when we do surveys of staff, we find that it's all about how they're treated, who cares about them, and, and um, they're not leaving necessarily the work that they're doing, they're leaving the managers and the supervisors. Um, so in the Gallup, Paul, they caution us to take a look at your managers first. Are they the ones that are um, creating the, the challenges and the problems? And to be able to pull them together, pull our supervisors together, to make sure that they are part of the solution rather than the, the problem. And maybe having conversations with them about how do we engage not only them if they are millennials, but certainly the, the part-time and the lower level staff um, to make sure that they are part of the solution. This is really important, not just for people who have a Tomcat and a 70-20-10 plan, but for anybody that's on your payroll. It's really important to make sure that all of those people, uh, front desk, administration, everywhere else, has um, access to the same language that shared knowledge of, we really care about you and we want to make sure that you know that and that you can learn and grow here. Um, and the other thing that we learn is that the relationships between an employee and a manager all built on trust. The more that a supervisor can show 
that their supervisee can trust them, that they are somebody that they can talk to, that they are somebody that they can come to and that has their back, the better the relationship will be. And all too often we see out in the um, private and public sector, that's not the way that companies and corporations act. <coughs> so we wanna make sure that that's happening in JCCs. Okay, Ellen, we can go to the next slide. So benchmarking talks about excellence and motivating staff. And how, how do we make sure that we're working in the way that the, our benchmarking statistics and, and data are teaching us? Recently, the 1718 um, benchmarking report tells us that 89% of staff agree or strongly agree that they have an opportunity to learn and grow. That's huge. <coughs> the more that we can show our staff that they have an opportunity to learn and grow, the more that they will feel that they're cared about, the more that they will understand that they have um, a path to growing in an organization. And it's not just a job, that we really care about how they um, progress with us. Benchmarking also shows us that 87% of people agree or strongly agree that senior management cares about their well being. That's a very high number, and it's also a number that's not defined. So we didn't define what a senior manager means, but for the people answering the survey, the benchmarking survey, it meant senior to them. So that could mean that the lifeguard believes that the aquatics director cares about their well-being, and it could mean that a department head feels that the executive director cares about their well-being. The question was posed in a way so that we would understand the general feeling from staff, and as you can see, 80%, 87% of the people feel that that is a good thing. Again, if we were to survey we're here on 8th Avenue in Manhattan in a high-rise um, office building. If we were to go across the street and knock on a door and ask the staff that are working in that organization, do you feel that your senior managers care about your well-being? Statistically, it's shown to us that it's less than 50% that will answer that question in a positive way. So JCCs have an amazing way of being able to show that we care and that we want to continuously help people learn and grow, and we want to keep them involved in the JCC field. It's not just about getting their job done. When I was um, at a JCC um, recently, I was talking to a young staff person, and they had told me that they loved their job because they were able to go on a date to their evening activity that was happening at the JCC because they were given two free tickets to the play. What a cool way to show our staff that we care about them, we want you to come. He said, I would have never been able to buy the ticket and take my girlfriend on this date. It was something that we both wanted to go to and the JCC gave me free tickets. That's really cool. We can do lots and lots of ways of showing our staff that we want them to be engaged in what their organization is doing, not just their own JCC and it shows them that we really care about them. So not only are we caring about them on their job, but also on their time off, because that really relates to a lot of what specifically millennials want to learn as well. So from our Supervision um, Excellence Training in a Box program, we find um, the following things that you'll see on your screen. This is all about strategies that you can do to build relationships in your JCC and how we can help supervisors get there. Because what we find in talent management is that the supervisors are the weak link. And the more that we, as the talent management coordinators and the senior managers, senior supervisors in JCCs can help our senior, our supervisors, doesn't matter what level they're on, the more we can help them, the more um, we will be able to build better relationships. So we talk about getting feedback from others and regarding their interpersonal style. 
how can we help a supervisor understand what their style is and how can we help them improve in either their communication or whether they're too abrupt or whether they're rubbing somebody the wrong way or whether they're just like a get to the facts, I'm very busy, just tell me if you got that marketing stuff to the marketing department, how can we help them realize that? And part of that can go into our 70-20-10 plans as well. How do we help our supervisors be more approachable and sincere and genuine? How do we help them learn how to listen with curiosity? So often our supervisors are listening with the intent to speak. So they're not really listening. They're formulating what they're going to respond. And oftentimes we have to slow supervisors down and let them just listen and give them the opportunity to listen with curiosity, to hear what their supervisor is say, supervisee is saying, and then respond. And the other thing that we have to do is uh, make sure that we're showing supervisors how to pay attention to their own nonverbal cues and their supervisee's nonverbal cues so that they can adjust their communication accordingly. Very often, I've heard from people who uh, they have time to sit with their supervisor, but their supervisor is looking over the, that person's shoulder to see who's walking by. Or they're checking their iPhone to make sure that they're not mixing, missing any texts. Or they're watching their watch to see what time the next meeting is. And so often we have to make sure that we're helping our supervisors just slow down and be in the moment and understand what their nonverbal cues are showing their supervisees. Because if somebody does that to me, it basically tells me you're not caring about our time. You don't really care about what I'm saying. You're not really listening to what I'm saying. And that's not going to build this trusting relationship between me and a supervisor if that's the way I'm being treated. So all of this plays into how do we help our supervisors build those strong relationships? Because again, Super, people quit their managers, they don't quit the job. So Ellen's going to talk to you for a few minutes about building 70-20-10 development plans based around supervision. Great. Thank you so much, Joy. Um, very interesting information. So <clears throat> now we're going to talk about supervision in regards to talent management and specifically related to the 70-20-10s. Um, we know that 70-20-10s are hard and they are a difficult part for the talent management process. It's where a lot of people get stuck, um, not just in doing them, but creating them. So the first thing is I want you and your supervisors to think of the 70-20-10 as an opportunity to make your supervisee's job better. Right? It's not just a stretch assignment, and it's not just an, another thing to put on their plate it's a way to really make them happier in their job because we are taking something that's not part of their day-to-day -day work and giving something for them to do to get, take them, as we always say, from good to great. <clears throat> as we talked about, trust is the most important thing between a supervisor and a supervisee. And this is such a key opportunity for a supervisor to gain trust with their supervisee. As Joy said, when you're having those conversations with them, when they feel like they're being listened to and heard, and you know they may mention something that they're very interested in, and then look, that's what their 70-20-10 is about, that gains a lot of trust in that relationship. And making it personal, right? So like I said, this is going beyond their day-to-day -day work. We're making a development plan to develop them, to develop them as a person and not just as, you know, a little worker bee that might be, you know, writing reports and doing these things. This is to grow them as an individual and doing these things that we just talked about with the supervision excellence, being approachable, being sincere, learning to listen with curiosity. When they trust, when a supervisee trusts their manager and has these discussions with them, there will be a greater personal connection that trust will build and that can all be built up like a pyramid with the development plan. And I want to just mention that, you know, the Tom reviewing a Tomcat 
is really a perfect opportunity for this. So before we get to the development plan, we always suggest with the Tomcats that, you know, the supervisor uh, does it, the supervisee does it, and then you come together and have a conversation about it. That conversation is super personal. And when you get to categories or, excuse me, characteristics that don't have to do with the supervisee's day-to-day -day job, that's the perfect opportunity for you to really build this trust and build your relationship with them. Ask them questions. Why did they rate themselves a three in marketing when they work in aquatics? You know, these are simple things that can really help grow the relationship. <laughs> and I want to, I don't, it may be hard to see if any of you are in, you know, bigger rooms, um, but what we have here is a 70-20-10 about supervision because supervisors need development just as much as a supervisee. So this 70-20-10 is on supervision. Our person is Natalie Portman. She's the director of operations at the JCC of Hollywood and her supervisor is Meryl Streep. She's very lucky. Um, so the 70%, I'm just gonna read through just in case anybody can't really see it because I know it might be a little small. So Natalie is going to participate in the ABC Mentoring Network as a mentor. She's gonna do this ongoing for a year and she's gonna provide quarterly reports to Merrill on how her leadership abilities are growing. She's also going to restructure supervision meetings with staff, her staff, to incorporate specific time for goals and personal development areas. And she's going to head coach a self-expression and leadership program starting in April. Good for her. Um, I wanna point out, uh, well, I'll read through and then I'll make some points. Um, under the 20%, this is who's gonna help you and how will they help you? So Natalie is doing the self-expression and leadership program and she's going to get ongoing coaching via weekly coaching calls with her coach. We don't know the coach's name. And that's going to happen from April to July of 2017. It should have been 18. Sorry. Um, and finally, her formal training, she's going to take our JCC Association Supervision Excellence webinar. Wow. Natalie, good job. Really good stuff in there. So let's talk about this 70-20-10 a few points about it. One, what makes this a really great 70-20-10? It is specific. I can't tell you how many times I've repeated that over and over and over again. Look at how specific it is. We know exactly where she's gonna be a mentor. We know exactly what coaching class she's taking. We know how she's going to restructure her meetings. And we know when she's reporting to Merrill, when her coaching calls are gonna happen, and which webinar she's taking. She's not just taking a webinar on supervision. She's taking the JCC Association Supervision Excellence webinar. So that's part, part one. It is very specific. The second point I wanna make is regarding the supervision meetings that Natalie is gonna be restructuring. So when you are a supervisor, right, we often are supervising more people that are not just in talent management. Like Joy mentioned before, maybe you're supervising front desk staff, maybe you're supervising lifeguards. Um, just because they're not in talent management doesn't mean that they don't deserve all these wonderful things that we're teaching you about supervision. They should be getting the same level of trust. They should feel that they have a good relationship with their supervisor just as much as somebody who's also in the talent management program. So these concepts that we're teaching you should really be bleeding through your entire JCC and not just staying within the talent management um, participants. Uh, and so, you know, this is something that we, just to go back and sort of repeat, you know, increasing trust, having these great personal relationships along with your professional relationships, it helps increase trust, it makes a good relationship, and that ultimately will decrease turnover, which we know can be a problem, and perhaps could even decrease turnover with areas like front desk staff and lifeguards. <clears throat> 
I want to just review a little bit about supervision excellence, which I've now mentioned, I think, five times. Um, we created this training in a box. Um, we had one person respond to the survey I sent out saying that, yes, they did receive it. No, they don't want another training on it. Um, all of you should have received this training in a box um, and attended our webinar. If you have not received it, please let me know and we can send it again. If you were not on the webinar, please go on it. It's on jcca.me. There you can find not just the webinar recording, but also the handouts as well. But I'm happy to mail you a copy if you would prefer a hard copy of it. That training really goes hand in hand with what we've been discussing today. Um, and if, like I said, if you want a refresher or more information, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, so that's really it. I'd love to throw out there um, any questions you may have. Do you have any questions about supervision, about what we discussed, um, anything that's working really well for you? Please just unmute yourself. And um, I will be adding that 702010 on supervision to our uh, library of them on jcca.me. Um, I have a quick question, which is not specifically about supervision, but um, we did do the training in the box. Um, Jennifer ran it for our managers, and, and I think it was very helpful and very well received. Do you have other similar training in a box programs in development? Great question, Steve. Thanks for the lead in. Yes, we do. Now, our next one is in our marketing department's hands right now. It is on building strong teams, and um, it should be out maybe around the biennial time, um, if not sooner. So uh, that, was, that was a great question. And we um, plan to do one more in 2018. We haven't decided on the topic yet. So if you all have some ideas for what the topic is, that you would like to have a PowerPoint built out and uh, facilitated talking points and handouts built out for you, Certainly shoot Ellen an email and let us know what the topics are that you think this is important for. I'm glad to hear that you guys use it. Did anybody else use it? Yeah, I think it's like the biggest best kept secret that JCC Association has that we are providing this material. I, I mean, we've hired outside consultants to write a lot of this in conjunction with the work that Ellen and I do. And um, it's sort of a shame that it's not being used. So. Well, so if you haven't done it and you're kind of feeling like, oh, I'm not really sure what they're talking about, if you go on jcca.me, under the professional development knowledge base, you'll see there's a talent management section. In that section, you will find our Supervision Excellence webinar. It's run by Jan Sparrow and Scott Asselon, and they take everybody through the PowerPoint and along with the PowerPoint is a facilitator's guide that literally says, hang this up in the room, start with this question, go to slide one. It's very specific and it's as, um, you know, Steve and Jennifer mentioned, we think it's excellent. I'm happy to see that um, Cody joined us. Um, and I'm wondering, we had started the conversation a little bit earlier in, the, in our time together on um, how we build relationships with younger staff and how we get people involved. And if anybody has, not, not just Cody, but if others have any um, input into that that they'd like to share with what you might be doing at your JCC to engage staff um, beyond just the tasks that they're doing, but to engage them in feeling part of the fabric of the JCC. If you're not able to unmute yourself, you could also write in the chat box and I'm happy to read it. While you're thinking about that, one of the other things that Ellen and I have been uh, batting around is how can we provide more of these kinds of um, short bursts of training to you and your staff? You don't need to answer it right now, but we'd like you to think about it. What, 
what would you bring a group of people together around the table for and what kind of training and support do you need? Um, specific to talent management or not? Um, we have a number of webinars that we do that are not just for talent management, but um, we consider all of our talent management communities sort of uh, special. And we want to make sure that you're doing the best you can for the people that you have in the talent management program. And we want to do the best that we can for all of you. So um, as you think about it, shoot us some emails and let us know what kind of trainings would resonate with you and with your staff, um, whether it's certain levels of staff, whether it's moving into the camp season and you're going to need um, some help getting your um, seasonal staff on board, whatever that topic is, we're happy to um, be able to set aside some time to do some workshops for you. Does anybody have any questions about anything we've reviewed? No? Okay, I don't see anybody unmuting themselves. Okay, that's okay. Well, if there's anything like Joy said that you want to maybe ask not in this open forum or you have suggestions for trainings, um, please reach out. We like to hear from you. We like to hear what's going well, what's going not well. Um, it helps us do our jobs better. Um, and if nobody has anything, then we'll end the Zoom. Uh, this is being recorded and will be uploaded to jcca.me. So if you want to show this to any staff, it'll be available for your use. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.